That's a good one. Just under 20 inches. There's a four or five pound Alabama bass right here. Got her. Hello there and welcome to the channel everyone. Today we're fishing an upland stream in the Coosa River drainage. The Coosa River drainage is of course part of the Mobile River Basin. And you only have three native species of black bass in the Coosa River drainage. The red-eye bass, the Alabama bass, and the largemouth bass. And we're not really targeting any one species today. We're just fishing. So I hope you like the video and thanks for watching. No way, no way. wondered why this fish was jumping. It appears to be. Check that out, y'all. That appears to be a 12-inch red-eye bass. With the mouth closed, he's 12 and a quarter. What do you think, Matt Lewis? Is that a real one? It appears to be a real one. Uh, not much color in the, not much red coloration in the soft dorsal, anal, and caudal fins. But it's got some, you know, you don't see the red, the red pigment you typically see. Uh, but that could be just because it's an older fish. It's got the white caudal fin margins. Of course, the hybrids often have that, but uh, they're per the, the, the white margins are more distinct in the red-eye bass, whereas in the hybrids, being an intermediate between species, the uh, many traits are often less distinct, and that includes the white caudal fin margins. And unfortunately, it also includes the coloration in the fins, or that's my opinion anyway. I'm not sure what the biologists will have to say about that, but... I'm pretty sure that's a red-eye bass, um, but I don't know. The body's pretty elongate, but that could just be from the spawn, you know. I got to get this fish back in the water. See you, buddy. Now, I'm here wading up this, uh, this run and uh this big riffle zone here and there's this pocket over here with this big back eddy and you can see all the foam on the surface of the water in that back eddy that's uh i just couldn't walk past that without throwing a worm in there uh, i knew there would be a red eye bass i didn't think there would be one that size if that was in fact a a real red eye bass and not a hybrid um but that water over there, it's only a couple feet deep, max. But uh, it's deep enough that, uh, you know, that's, that's all a red-eye bass needs. And you've got lots of trees hanging over the water right there. So lots of insects uh, could potentially fall into the water there. <laughs> and you've got this big back eddy, which would uh, also deliver any uh, invertebrates or fish you know, displaced by this current, they would end up in this big back eddy. So that fish was right there. Um, I, you know, I hope I got that uh, on on camera. But uh, anyway, if that was a red eye bass, that's the largest one I've caught this year. And uh, we are fishing in the Coosa River drainage. 
So you only have three native species of black bass, the red-eye bass, which is the upland species of black bass, the, the Alabama bass, and the largemouth bass. Anyway, this spot right here where that back eddy is, it would be even better if the water was higher. Uh, there would be more of a, obviously there would be, the water would be deeper where the back eddy is, and they would also have, uh, you can see where when the water is up, uh, it's eroded the bank there. You can see the root systems are exposed and it's undercut. So when this water's up, not only do they have the back eddy as a refuge, but they can get up under those root systems uh, there along next to the bank. If I see a spot that looks that good, I, I've just got to make a cast. And I caught that, caught that last uh, red-eye bass just on the old Texas rig. That's a 1 8 ounce tungsten uh, bullet weight, a one aught offset gamakatsu uh, worm hook, and just a, just a zoom green pumpkin red finesse worm. Wow, that otter came up right in front of me. Hey, buddy. Boy, that one had it the second I picked up on it. It was not very... Not a very good hook set. Oh man, he's got it again. And I gotta clean the lens on my camera. Well. Now that looks more like a red-eye bass. You can see the, uh, the red coloration in the soft dorsal, anal, and caudal fin. It's kind of a brick red color or a tea color. That's just a perfect looking red-eye bass. Let's see ya, buddy. Check that out. Found somebody's boga grips. Of course, they're full of gravel and are no longer, and sand, full of sand, and no longer functioning. The old uh, river treasure, I guess. That's got to be a Bama bass there. And this is a male, and I know that because he sprayed milk when I grabbed him and he first came out of the water, but that's an Alabama bass. You can see the blotches that make up the mid-lateral stripe are broken, especially near the tail. Plus Alabama bass, they're uh, native to the Mobile Basin, so we know there are no spotted bass in this drainage, even though a lot of anglers still call this fish a spotted bass. Uh, they were actually split from the spotted bass in 2008, but most anglers still call this fish a spotted bass. This is the fish that, that was 
introduced illegally to uh, Lake Lanier in the 70s, by the way. And uh, they're in a lot of other places now, but uh, there are no spotted bass in Lake Lanier. They're all this fish, the Alabama bass. And uh, from 1940 to 2008, they were classified as a subspecies of the spotted bass, the Alabama spotted bass. And uh, some anglers call them Coosa spotted bass. But uh, let me get this fish back in the water. That's a male, by the way. And I already said that because uh, the fish sprayed milk. But you can see that, that red eye. Uh, yeah, he had enough of me. They are native to the Coosa drainage, obviously, which is part of the Mobile Basin. So I released that fish. Oh, should have had a trailer hook. That's a good one. Oh, I got down in the current. Got her. Oh, that's a nice Bama bass. Check out that one, you guys. That fish was spawning. And uh, we know that because look at the tail. And it's still pretty thick, too. Uh, but the fins are also kind of ragged. That's obviously a, a female. And uh, she was right up there, right at the base of that, uh, that tree right there. I can't tell what species it is, but uh, that's a really nice fish. Not quite 20 inches. It's about 19 and a half or so. Just under 20 inches. But uh, I'm afraid if I let this fish go here, it's not going to get back over to where I caught it. Uh, it's, it's there's a lot of fast water here, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk back over there with this fish because I, I know it was on a bed. That's a nice fish. Really a beautiful Alabama bass, native Alabama bass. She was spawning right there.
see ya. There she goes. You can see we're right here on the edge of this uh, current seam here. We've got a nice little run over here and uh, a lot of coarse, clean bottom here. And again, that's because of these shoals. Uh, what happens when the water is high is you have a lot of turbulence um, and that prevents any silt uh, from settling to the bottom here. Um, that turbulence keeps the <coughs> excuse me that turbulence coming off of these uh, shoals when the water's up keeps that silt in suspension it stays in the water column suspended and the current just blows it downstream so it, it never settles here and so the fish have a nice clean bottom here to spawn and because of that turbulence I think I used the term scour in another video but it's really turbulence that prevents that silt from dropping out of the water uh, and settling to the bottom this is a uh, a mini me spinnerbait and at one time they were made by uh, SOB lures in Texas and the company was bought by spot sticker lures I believe and uh, what kind of makes this lure unique or different there is, uh, is the weight is, uh, you know, not only do you have lead here in the head of the lure, but there's also a weight behind the skirt collar right there. And this is a 3 8 ounce uh, spinnerbait. I forget the color, but it's just got some, uh, it's just a basic shad pattern with uh, some chartreuse and some gray scale they may call that sexy shad i'm not real sure but uh, spot sticker lures makes this uh spinnerbait and it's it's really good and the, and the reason that uh that i that i really like this uh weight behind the skirt collar is because it helps the bait stay upright especially when you have a lot of turbulence uh like we do here in a in a creek or river it's uh you really want that lure to stay upright and it's you know uh, with so much current it you know it, it wants to roll over on its side and uh, just doesn't look as natural to the fish of course when it's doing that y you will still catch fish obviously but uh, I just like the bait to uh, ride upright as much as possible uh, not only is it more weedless that way but I think you're uh, uh, hooking percentage goes up but again I, that's just like my opinion of course and these are both uh, these are both just nickel willow leaf blades and they do have some glitter there looks like some green glitter but it's it's mainly just a, a three and a half and a four size a willow leaf blade there and I'm throwing it on 30 pound braided line probably should have a trailer hook but I don't have one on today and that's just because I forgot to bring them another thing I forgot to mention about this spinnerbait is uh, another obvious advantage of having that weight behind the skirt collar is that the lure has a smaller profile so if you're targeting upland species of black bass you know we have a lot of red eye bass here in the Coosa drainage um, this is an excellent choice Without, you can use a heavier lure without going to a larger frame. I'm, I'm using a 3 8 here, but uh, I sometimes use a half. In some situations where you might have a release below a dam, I may go up to a 3 quarter ounce. Oh, wow, y'all. There was a very large fish following my spinnerbait. I could not tell if it was a black bass or a striper. It kind of looked like an Alabama bass, just kind of, they do that a lot when they're spawning, you know, they just run up, run your lure off the bed without actually eating it. And of course, the only way, well, the best way to catch those fish is just to keep throwing in there. 
or if if they are in fact spawning there he is I don't think that's the the one I saw but it's a it's a decent one Well, wow, that fish was not coming off. Makes you wonder how those other ones got off. Well, check out that Alabama bass. Wow, something got him right there. That looks like a bird, like a like a great blue heron might have. Well, either that or a an osprey or an eagle talon. But uh, that fish is really colored up. Obviously, this fish is about to spawn, but uh, that's an Alabama bass. Their blotches are not always elongated like this, so that this one could be could be a hybrid. It's got some modeling here on the belly. They don't they don't typically have that, but again, around the spawn, they get uh, their markings are a lot more distinct. See ya. You know, I was just talking about when you have a, a, a nice fish follow your bait back to the boat or whatever, uh, the best thing to do is to make, obviously, is to make several more casts back to that area. Obviously, if you have a, a soft plastic rigged up, you know, some type of bottom bait, that's, that's the best thing you can throw in there. Um, a Texas rig, a, sh a Texas rig, a shaky head, a Ned rig, you know, a wacky rig. R really, I prefer something that weighs at least one eighth of an ounce. Uh, and I have seen, especially where you have current in a stream like this, I've seen times where a sixteenth ounce weight wasn't enough weight. Uh, the current would just blow it over the you know across the bed and out of the bed you need something that weighs at least an eighth of an ounce in my opinion to stay there in the nest long enough to uh to be a threat to the fish otherwise they 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 won't they have no reason to uh to eat your lure or defend the nest really if the current is just going to blow it out of there so you, you know this time of year where you have spawning fish in a stream you want to go with a little heavier weight than you might otherwise use uh, the rest of the year. Now these could be small fish or they could just be grabbing the tail of the worm. These fish don't have hands obviously so they just a lot of times they'll just take the the worm by the tail and swim off with it and spit it out you know once they get get clear of the nest. There's a good one. Another Alabama bass, probably a male guarding a nest, but he hit that spinnerbait, which they often do. There he goes. Oh wow, y'all. I just see, there's a four or five pound Alabama bass right here.
got her. There she goes. Oh no. Oh man. I'm pretty sure that fish is spawning right here. We'll see if she comes back. I don't think it was five pounds, but it was probably right at four. It was a really nice fish. I probably had my drag too loose and I just never got the hook in the fish past the barb because I was playing it so light. Oh my gosh, y'all. This is beautiful. See you, buddy. Oh, now. Oh. Awesome. a little over 10 probably beautiful see you buddy wow look what that is is that there's no way Oh, wow. Just when you thought they couldn't get any prettier. Amazing. So that one is just over 11. Well, not a very pretty release. That was my fault. Got the colors on that guy. Textbook red eye bass. All right, buddy. See ya.
Well, that's a chunkster. We're not going to put him on the board, but that's a textbook red eye bass. See you, buddy.